Welcome to Fairview Baptist Church in Lindsay. Not only do we want to minister to the people who regularly attend Fairview, but we also want to minister to those who live within the city of Kortha Lakes with the good news of Jesus Christ. Come on in and, and join us for worship. It is our prayer that you'll be blessed. And God's servant to our heart this morning is Will McLaughlin. Will comes all the way from Northern Ireland. He is, but uh, he's been in Canada for uh, just over uh, three years. Uh, he now lives in Hamilton. He's with a ministry called Christians Against Poverty. And I heard about this ministry over a year ago. Uh, Mike Kleinhaus from Center Community Church brought him to him, uh, brought the ministry a proposal to, to the ministerial. And we just found that it, it is a ministry that's very practical. And, and their passion is to see people come to know Jesus Christ. And, and very practical, though. And you'll hear about that today. Um, Will comes from Hamilton. He is married uh, to Leanne, and they have uh, three children, two girls and one boy. And uh, you might ask, hey, wh wh why have a ministry like this, you know, just kind of before Christmas uh, come? Well, part of the reason why is because we did have them booked for uh, September, but things just didn't work out back in September, so I booked them for December. But there's another reason. Many times at Christmas, we're thinking about, hey, how can we give and, 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 um, and help others who are less, less fortunate in this, in this time of year? I think this ministry will give some practical tools on how we can help the less fortunate within our community and also around the world. So would you give a big welcome uh, to, to Will as he comes and shares God's word to us? Yep, I am on happy days. Um, yeah, a huge thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning, um, particularly for Pastor John and the team here at Fairview for inviting us to be with you today. It's such a privilege for us at Christians Against Poverty to be able to visit so many different churches all across Southern Ontario, and particularly for me today, recognizing that as a church community, you have such a clear focus on glorifying God in all you do, that as you seek to reach and teach and equip, that the heart of everything you do is to give honor and glory to him is fantastic, and just want to encourage you that as you continue to press into that, that speaks to the community. That makes such a massive, massive difference. And as you mentioned, small groups this morning as well, two of the books that are over there are Walk Across the Room. And if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. And both of those books I know have spoken very personally to, to me, um, to, to people in the church that I was part of back in Northern Ireland as well. And so I just really want to encourage you that if you're thinking about whether to get involved in small groups, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing to do. And it will bring more people around you who can support you on your own journey. So definitely go across, see Pastor Vic um, at the end. Um, as Pastor John said, my name is Will McLaughlin. Um, I was part of the pioneer team bringing Christians Against Poverty to Canada in March 2013. Um, we had been invited by a number of churches and individuals who had seen the work that CAP was doing in the UK and Australia and New Zealand and realized that here in Canada, many people were facing similar pressures, similar difficulties. And they'd seen the way that CAP equipped the local church and so asked us to come over. And what brought me here was really a passion for justice a desire to see the poor and the vulnerable in our local communities given the opportunity to move forward in life. 
And also, in all of that, seeing people's lives transformed when they come to know Jesus personally. And this is what Christians Against Poverty does. That's who we are. We equip local churches to reach into their local neighborhoods. Changing lives with practical help, yes, but also the love of Jesus. Offering people hope and a solution to the difficulties they face, but also always pointing to the one who can bring hope and peace to their hearts and minds. Changing lives today, but also for eternity. Debt counseling, employment skills, a compassionate community, and financial education are the ways that we engage with the community, the way we build bridges into people's lives to connect with difficulties and struggles that they are encountering. And that's been the case since Christians Against Poverty launched in the UK 20 years ago, when a man called John Kirkby was overwhelmed by debt himself. His friends disappeared, he lost his home, his wife left, and with two little girls, destitute, barely able to put food on the table, a local church came alongside him. They couldn't solve all of his problems, but they could love John they could invite him around for lunch, for supper. And as John witnessed and experienced this love and compassion of the local church, he realized that in the midst of all of his struggles, he wanted to trust Jesus. He did that. He got baptized. He started walking and following as a disciple, but very quickly felt challenged and called by God to serve others who were facing the same difficulties and hurts that he had experienced and give them a way forward. So armed with a $15 donation, John started Christians Against Poverty. 20 years later, we've seen over 6,000 of our clients come to faith in the local church, growing, being discipled. We've seen tens of thousands of families lifted out of poverty and given a way forward in life. In the UK, Christians Against Poverty and the local church are the number one provider of financial education to adults. That's the church leading that charge. We're recognized as being um, within the credit industry, having the greatest impact on that industry to help them care for vulnerable people. Again, that's all about God's glory because this was always his plan and his deal. We get the privilege to play a role in that. But this is about his glory and his kingdom. And today, if you'd like to find out a little bit more about that story, um, we do have a copy of Nevertheless. Um, We found some of John's diaries from those early struggles, um, and they've been kind of made into this little book. And we want to give you a copy of that for free today. Um, You may have this form in your bulletin. If not, I have more out in the foyer, Uh, but at the top it just says take your free copy of Nevertheless. You can put your name, address, or email in there, just some contact details so we can let you know what's happening uh, with CAP. Um, But if you bring that um, over to us, fill that in, then I'll happily hand over one of those books. So top part of this form filled in, get a copy of the book, no form, no book, form, book. That's that's kind of the way it works. It's, It's fairly simple. We like to try and keep it that way. Um, And we just encourage you to grab that, to be inspired by what God can do. If John was here today, and I've heard him say this dozens and dozens of times, he would stand before you and say, if God can take me at my lowest point and use me to change my own life and my family's life and then the lives of hundreds and thousands of other people, we can never write anybody off. And we can never write ourselves off. Because maybe God wants to do something spectacular with some of you here. Maybe he has ideas and dreams for Lindsay that you have in your heart because he wants to use you. But you're nervous, you're afraid. You wonder if God's actually wanting to use you. Grab a copy of that book and be inspired by what he can do. Maybe some of you are called to go overseas. Maybe some of you are called to make a massive difference in your workplace, in this community. 
again, be inspired by what God is doing today. And I want to encourage you today. I'm going to share a little bit about Christians Against Poverty um, and some of the detail of how we partner with churches. But really, all of this is to say we, as followers of Jesus, as the local church, can bring lasting hope and transformation to our societies today and for eternity. And that's something I passionately believe that we are called to do every single one of us. Let's read together from a well-known chapter in Isaiah chapter 58. And starting at verse 6. Oh, yeah, too old, skip on. Here we go. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. This incredible prophetic word given to Isaiah centuries before Jesus would come and give the same message is packed with good news, is packed with the message of the gospel. You know, God wants his people, us as followers, to understand that in his kingdom, worship and justice can meet. That means that how we choose to love our neighbor can reveal how much we love him. That as we love others, we are loving God. And God gives us some very clear examples of what loving our neighbor looks like. Loosen the chains of injustice. Untying the cords of the yoke. Setting the oppressed free. And breaking every yoke. This is a call to every single one of us who call ourselves followers of Jesus to be involved in helping those who find themselves marginalized and oppressed without hope, without help, and to bring the amazing, incredible, life-changing news of Jesus to those who desperately need to hear it. And that's hard work. That can be tough because it takes time and it takes effort, and it takes resources. And we might be able to untie the cords of the yoke a little bit, but then we still need to set people free and, and eventually break every yoke, and it doesn't happen right away or overnight. It's a process. It takes time, and it takes effort. And one example of this is just Jesus, through his life and death and resurrection. Because he broke the ultimate yoke that was on each and every one of us of sin and death. He took that yoke, which is why he can so gloriously and wonderfully declare in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, 
and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. What an incredible privilege it is to share that message with those who feel weary and burdened, who have not experienced rest, who just know harsh words and pain. To say that there is somebody who wants to bring peace and rest, who will be gentle, who is humble, and who wants you to know that rest deep in your soul. What an incredible message we have to share that. So which yokes need to be broken? Well, every yoke. Because when we do that, when we step in and we choose to see those yokes broken, we are really proclaiming that he is still king. We are given all of the glory to God because when that happens, we can celebrate just like this verse in Corinthians that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. People's lives can be radically transformed, can be radically turned around. The old, whatever that has been, can be left in the past, can be the old story. A new story can be written for every single person. You know, I have the privilege of working for an organization that has been active in this for the past 20 years. Um, I was a pastor in Northern Ireland. Our church had partnered with Christians Against Poverty because we saw so many needs in our community that we were able to meet in small ways. We ran a food bank and we assisted other food banks in the community because emergency support was needed for people. We did that for clothing as well because there was an essential need there. But what we realized over time was that we wanted to not just untie some of those cords of the yoke, but we wanted to see it broken. We wanted to see captives released. And so we wanted to try and go deeper in what we were doing. That's why we partnered with Christians Against Poverty. Breaking yokes, helping people find hope through the local church. And when we do all of this unapologetically in his name, it means that all of the glory goes to him. Yes, CAP has an incredible reputation in the UK, People work incredibly hard. People have made massive sacrifices. But ultimately, all of that is for his glory alone. Because only he can transform people's lives and hearts. You know, in Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, it says, Does not wisdom call out? Does not understand and raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, where the paths meet, she takes her stand. For Christians Against Poverty, in partnership with local churches, that is where we want to take our stand. When people face crucial decisions and choices, we want to stand there and bring wisdom to those choices, to bring truth in love to those decisions. And everything we do is always through the local church. Every partnership is with a local church. The services are open to everybody. We see this as a way for churches to reach out into the community, to care for the community and the neighborhoods around. But every partnership is with a local church because as we see lives transformed, we want people to become part of a loving community, a family where they can know people and be known, where they can be accepted and cared for and challenged to grow and become disciples of Jesus, followers of his. And that happens best in the local church. It happens wonderfully in small groups 
where we come alongside, where we share what's going on, where we learn about his word and we decide to follow him each and every day. So how does that work in practice? What ways do we partner with the local church? Well, the first uh, way we partner is through our CAP Money course. Um, Michael uh, has been trained to run the CAP Money course um, for this church, and there will be a course that's starting in January um, that is there designed to help people do something very simple, to budget, to save, and to spend. It's a simple course. It's designed to equip you as an individual to look at your finances and to make sure that our money is going where our values and where our heart is. Maybe it'll help us get on top of some of the struggles we're having. Maybe it will help us be more generous. Maybe we're part of the 50% of Canadians who say they worry about their finances. The 49% who say they're one paycheck away from real difficulties. That means there is a massive community out there who desperately need some wisdom, who need some help as they face crossroads. Is it a complicated course? No, it's nice and simple. And just to highlight that, we've got our little Cap Money promotional clip that we're just gonna show. It's simple. The video, it has a catchy little tune. It might get stuck in your head. You may be humming it this evening. I apologize if that is the case. But it's just designed to say, let's not overcomplicate things. Let's keep it simple. Do some little steps that could bring about massive change. Every day we handle money, but we're not always sure about what's really going on. Things can get a little overwhelming. Saving for special occasions can be a real challenge, and we don't always come out on top. And at the end of the week, do you know how much you have to spend? Going on a CAP Money course will help you get in control of your money. Learn how to build an organized budget. Get better at saving for special occasions. And set money aside for spending. The CAP Money Course. Budget, save, spend. Maybe going on that course in January could lift some of the pressure that you've been feeling. Practically, we hope that that tool does that for you. Maybe you are sitting here and thinking, well, really, that doesn't matter to me because you know, financially things are fine and I know how to budget. Can I encourage you that if you have the time to go on the course, because you may have neighbors or work colleagues or family or friends, where you've had that conversation and they've said to you, <laughs> this month just felt a little bit too long, Things are just a little bit tight, but you know, we'll get by. What if you could invite them to a course that might change things so that every month is not just about getting by, but it's about trying to plan well for the future. Maybe you're sitting there and thinking, you know what, going on a course, things are a mess. Can I encourage you just still go on the course? Get a little bit of help. Maybe it'll help you understand why things are so difficult. Because perhaps the income and the expenditure you have, that's just going to be tough. And you asking for help is okay. Because sometimes we just need some assistance. So wherever you're at, can I encourage you to really jump in on that course. Help out. Be part of that. Use that to build bridges to the community. We also recognize that for many, though, a course, no matter how good it is, comes too late. Things are already overwhelming. 
that it feels so difficult that there doesn't look as if there's hope. In those, we, we um, look at our debt centers. Again, we train somebody from a local church who can then support people in the local community. That person doesn't have to be a financial expert because we have those financial skills at our head office in Hamilton. The fellow who heads up our team um, is an accredited financial credit counselor. Um, we're working through a process at the moment with the Canadian Association of Credit Counseling Services um, that will see us become fully accredi accredited and affiliated with them late in 2017. And what that means is we will be the only provider of debt credit counseling to the most vulnerable in Canada through the local church. There's lots of other wonderful organizations. They are fantastic. They do help. That is not to be critical of what they do. But we know, having spoken to those organizations, that they've said what we are doing, they could not possibly do. Because it's through the local church. It's that compassion and that love that willingness to speak and breathe life into people who feel completely overwhelmed that only the local church can do. That's what makes the difference to this thing. We've launched a few pioneer debt centers to make sure that things work here in Canada, to make sure that we are doing things the right way. We've had wonderful success with them so far. We've seen Ontario Works refer people to Christians Against Poverty. We've had Ontario Works offices calling up and saying, is there a debt center in our community yet? No, sorry, there's not. Well, why not? We need one. We figure that's a good thing when people are asking. We've seen walk-in clinics refer people because doctors recognize some of the folks they're trying to help. The finances play such a big role and that's something they can't speak to. So we've seen walking clinics refer people to Christians Against Poverty. We've seen social workers. We've seen everybody who works with the vulnerable saying, okay, we need this resource. And what it means is that our head office team can contact creditors, can speak and negotiate on behalf of our clients. It means that we can lift that pressure off from the single mom with two kids who's been left with a lot of debt who needs somebody to come alongside, who needs to lift that pressure off so that she can focus on her family. That's what CAP does. That's what the local church offers. Recently, we've launched a new service um, to enable churches to help those who uh, have been long-term unemployed. Because for many people, that constant rejection, that constant hurt, feeling like you've been written off again, is something that once that happens two, three, four times, why bother being rejected yet again? Why bother being told you're not good enough yet again? And for some, that's what ends up trapping them in poverty. Job clubs create community for people who have been long-term unemployed. The material is very good, the same kind of material that you would see in a lot of other job programs. What's different, again, is because it's the local church, because it's community-based, it means that we get to breathe life into people. So that meant Tracy that comes on the job club, who's written herself off the whole time, say she doesn't have any skills, she has no abilities, and yet every single week when she walks in, she smiles, she welcomes everybody else as they come in. She says hello, she speaks to other people in the group, she offers to help. And as we see that, we're able to say, you know what, Tracy, you are just, you breathe life into other people. You make other people feel welcome. You're a wonderful person to have on any team. You do all these simple things that most of us forget about. You do them naturally. You are so hospitable. And all of a sudden, for the first time, Tracy starts to believe that she has abilities and gifts and skills that others might want, that others might need. And so her confidence rises. And as we talk about resume writing, as we talk about interviews, she realizes she has stuff she can share. You know, I've been told when I walk into a room that I, I, I lighten that room, I make people feel welcome. 
that's something that I believe I have a real gift in that area. I would love to bring that to your workplace. It makes a difference. You know, through those services, it means that in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, we're helping tens of thousands of families every single year. We're seeing four or five people come into faith every single working day. Because the reality is, if you've been walking in darkness, and somebody comes and takes your hand and walks with you, and builds relationship with you, and then points you to the one who is the light, so often people run towards that light because we represent his heart for the vulnerable, his heart for those lost children who desperately need to come home. Children like Colleen, who called her debt center. She, at one stage, had laid out all of her clothes that she wanted to be buried in on the bed because she didn't see any point in moving forward. Life didn't have anything left to offer. When she called us and reached out for help, it was kind of her final, let's see if somebody can help. I'll, leave, I'll call Christians Against Poverty. The local debt coach met her, gathered the information that we needed, sent that off to our head office team. The local debt coach went back to, to see her and talk to her. And, and as they talked, it occurred to the debt coach that you know, Colleen had been walking through her entire life on her own, and that's not what God wants. So she explained how Jesus wants to be part of our lives, wants to walk alongside us. And in that, Colleen decided, okay, I want, I want that in my life. So she made a commitment to follow Jesus. Because it was the local church, she got plugged into a prayer group that was happening. She got to talk to some of the other ladies in the church. She built up friendships. She built up relationships. In November last year, she was baptized in the local church, declaring her faith to everybody in that community. This year, she started a small business helping seniors in her community with a couple of other people in the church. Somebody who the enemy had tried to steal and kill and destroy, Jesus stepped into their life. And now there are seniors in that community who are experiencing love and compassion and help and support. That is what God can do. That is what Jesus is about. Bring in massive transformation to the vulnerable. You know, if that's your heart to see lives transformed as yokes are broken through the local church and the love of God, then I want to extend an invitation to all of you um, to consider becoming a life changer with Christians Against Poverty. Our amazing life changers support CAP on a monthly basis through support ranging from $5 a month, a coffee a week, through to other amounts that I could only ever dream of. But our commitment to work through the local church means that a lot of funding streams are not available to us. The fact that we go after the most vulnerable means that as a credit constant organization, our business strategy is terrible. But it's the local church and individual followers of Jesus supporting this work that means we can step in amongst the most vulnerable. And thankfully, we can trust God for the finances. When we first arrived in Canada, um, it was my wife, Leanne, our two girls at that stage, Eden and Malia. We've since had a little boy, Erin. Um, but we arrived, we had several suitcases, a car seat, and no bank account and no idea what God was going to do. But he's done amazing things because that's, again, who God is. If we get out of the boat, maybe he will help us to walk on water. John started CAP with a $15 donation 20 years ago. And yet nations have been impacted because of that. What that means is that every dollar for us really does make a massive difference. Um, we are a registered Canadian charity. Um, all of the finance that is raised in Canada goes towards CAP Canada. Um, sometimes people think, well, CAP UK probably fund you. Well, no, because people in the UK give to tackle UK poverty. This is definitely a Canadian charity even though you've got a bald person from Northern Ireland speaking to you. My wife's originally from Saskatchewan, so I figure that's, that's okay. I can call myself Canadian. So um, We're also with, uh, we've got our seal of accreditation from the four C's, um, the uh, Canadian uh, Christian Charity Council. Those words probably in different order, but um, 
yeah, it just it makes such a massive difference to us if you do want to support this work. You can do that on the forms. You don't have to fill this part in to get a book, okay? All that's needed for the book is the kind of name and email contact. But if you do want to support us on the form, there's a way you can just tick the box. If you don't have all the details with you today, that's fine. We can call you. If you do have the details, that cuts down our admin, which is always helpful for any charitable organization. But you will be part of setting the captives free. One of the beautiful things I know John has enjoyed this year in the UK is going back to people who 20 years ago supported CAP when it was this little dream and this little vision. And he was able to sit with them and say, look what God's done. Right now, we are small here in Canada. Um, we partner with about 180 churches for the CAP Money course. Um, we have eight uh, pioneer debt centers that we've set up and a handful of job clubs. But we know that the mission of CAP is to serve the poor, to save the lost through the church across the nation. We know where we're going to be. And I would love to celebrate with some of you in 20 years' time as well as we achieve some amazing, incredible, fantastic things. So just to finish off, four different ways for you to be able to get involved. First, fill in that top of the form, get a copy of Nevertheless. Get involved in the Cap Money course when it runs in January with Michael. If not for you, then for the other people you might be able to influence to come on the next course. Interested in one of the other services, if the idea of a debt center or a job club is something that resonates in your heart, come and speak to us. Neither of those things will happen tomorrow. Because we work with a local church, we always talk to local leadership, so Pastor John and the team. The elders, this is a church decision to do this. So it won't happen quick because we want to make sure we do this right. And for us, we only set up certain training times during the year because we know when is the best time to launch debt centers or job clubs. But if you're interested, please do speak to the team here. Begin that conversation. And the final way, if you're interested, to become a life changer with us, become part of this amazing thing that God is doing. Just like to pray, and then I'll hand back to Pastor John and the team. Yeah, Father, I thank you for this church, for this community of people who are following you and who you have called to make a difference in Lindsay and in the surrounding areas. And yeah, Father, I thank you for the heart of this church. There is a desire to glorify you. And I just ask, would you be generous this year with this church? Would you give them so many reasons and ways to celebrate and to just enjoy glorifying you and handing the praise and the honor back to you. For the Cap Money course that's going to run in January, would you um, bless Michael as he leads that? Um, would you gather others who can support him in that? And we just ask that this would be something that would take the yokes and the burdens off of some people here and in the community. Yeah. God, we just ask that we would get to celebrate with you as those lost wanderers come home. We ask all this for your glory and your honor alone. Amen. And if you like to be part of that, uh, that, uh, that course in January, it's just a, a four-week course on Monday evenings. And um, Michael Scott's here. He'll be out there at the table too. It's, it's neat how Michael um, was just saved a, a year ago. And uh, he came to me, Pastor John, you know, I, I, I'm an accountant. What can I do for Jesus? I said, hey, how about this Cap Money course? And he said, I love it. And uh, I think you'll be blessed if you uh, get the teaching that he'll bring in the new year. So let, let me close off in prayer. Lord, we thank you for ministries like Christians Against Poverty who, who really want to do your work and equip the churches, the local churches, the local community churches uh, to make a difference in their community. And we thank you for the expertise and, and, and the wisdom that you brought to this organization. And we pray, Lord, as we do our little part here in Lindsay, that you would, um, you, you would, you would allow us to make a difference in people's lives, uh, starting in our church, but also out in the community here. And we pray that we just would see in the next months and, and years more and more life transformation because people have come into the light. 
and have turned their, their back on the darkness and they're following after you. Oh, Lord Jesus, that's our, our heartbeat. So I, I pray, Lord, as we depart from here now that you dismiss us with your blessing. In Christ's name, amen. It is our desire to encourage you through this program. If you do not yet belong to a church, we'd love to have you come and connect with us. We have programs for all ages. There is a spiritual need, or if you have been blessed through our service, we'd love to hear from you. You can contact us during regular office hours by phone, or you can email us. Thank you for watching our service. May God bless you.